As a matter of fact, Kevin Vickers was the RCMP officer in Burnt Church at the time, and he told me that he had one of his colleagues research and found that back in history, the indigenous people helped hide the Francophones from the Anglophones during, uh, I think, the expulsion of the Acadians. Yeah. And there was a, a rapprochement, yeah. comme on dit. Yeah. Uh, so that is a happy little footnote yeah. to a, a, a tragic story. Yeah, well, I have a lot of stories like that, like from the, coming from the chiefs. And uh, you see, just to, to refer to this experience, it started as a just an idea that was starting to, to bloom and, 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 and with the material uh, I had to re revisit the chiefs afterward. So this, this collection of 12 to become 13 paintings because I, I was commissioned by the Governor General of the time, Michael Jean, because she wanted Marguerite Labillois, one of the portraits, and I told her I can't break the circle. So to refuse a, a painting at Rideau Hall, you have to let go the ego and the resume and all of this. So she said, okay, another painting, if you could do a, a native uh, woman. And I went back for the 13 painting. But uh, what, happen what happens here is like, from one chief to another, I would learn a completely different experience, a different way of life. For example, uh, uh, something happened down the road after this. Somebody uh, saw the paintings and he had a publishing house and he approached me to, to set me up with a, a great Acadian writer, probably one of the best. So it became a book with all the the paintings represented in, in the book. And from that book, there was a, a, a documentary. So I had to go back and, and meet the chiefs again. Not to say, uh, do you like what I did, but to have their, their feedback, their feelings. You know. And I couldn't do uh, an interview uh, on camera for a documentary uh, by asking the preconceived questions, you know, like, as if I was somebody like all prepared. I went there and for an example, we sat, I sat with uh, Peter Barlow to refer to your story. Uh, we were in the marsh, there were two cameras rolling and uh, the crew was about 10 people. And he spoke to me and he looked in my eyes for over an hour, he never looked sideways, he looked at me. And he told me about his father that was paralyzed and learn to walk without any feelings in, the, is the, in his legs. And then uh, he told me about when there at Indian Island, when a, an English boat arrived, they were living uh, with the, the Acadians, the French. They were like together because they understood from the start that we could sit and eat with them. So it was a tremendous mark of uh, respect by the Acadians because they knew the past history, and uh, he said they helped hide the, the Canadian people in the back of the island so they wouldn't find them. And after the interview was completed and they were, the crew was leaving, he had a beautiful native shirt, uh, shirt it was red, and I have it here. He turned around and he said, Don, and he took the shirt off his back and he handed me a shirt. I said, Peter, don't do that, please. He said, uh, Don, What's a gift if it's not precious to you? So <laughs> I was 50 some and I started this, I was uh, 50 years old. I'm 70 and uh, I love Acadian people. They're from my mom's side. I also have Irish from my dad's side. And uh, no Acadian has ever taken the shirt off his back to give it to me. I will never forget moments like that. Another uh, thing that really happened that changed forever, when I was sick, I was going through treatments and running from the northern New Brunswick to the south for those treatments. And one day there's a truck that pulled into my yard in Popmush, where I was born. 
where I had my art gallery in order to hang up my paintings. Uh, he came over and said, it was, it was Margaret Lebelois' son, Gordon. He said, Mom wants to organize a sweat lodge for you. We never did it for a white man before. We do it for people that are sick and need help, that have problems. And my wife, Glenda, is mandated by the community and she would be honored to receive you. So they told me, just bring a little gift. I went there, it was a, a tent, like a wigwam, and it was black, covered with tarps, and they had, they had eaten up the stones all night in preparation for this. Marguerite Labillois went in first and she laid on the blanket, and there was a hole in the ground, and then Gordon came in last, his wife was in the back, and his sister was there. And I, en I entered into that, that dome, and uh, I sat in the back, and they, uh, they implored the Great Spirit, they, they implored the Spirit, and they asked forgiveness if the Labidwa had uh, forsaken them, so the, the Great Spirit, that is. And they had asked uh, forgiveness if my, if my family had, had been at odds with the Great Spirit, and they implored the Great Spirit to spare my life. They wanted me to stay on this planet a little longer. After this was finished, they brought me inside. I showered, and then they offered me a meal. There was a long table, and all most of his, her family were there, her sons and daughters. And she was sitting on, on my right side, and she put her hand on mine. All of my ignorance was purified instantly. And I swore there at the end of the, I swore at the end of the table I would never turn my back. Never. As long as I have a breath, I carried this forward. The only goal has been that is it be preserved, that it could speak to future generations about reconciliation. And recently, one of the chiefs has become one of my best friends. I asked him for a letter because some people in higher grounds, they believe that it could be just stories in my head. And I said, I need just a little paragraph from, from you as Passamaquoddy that saved the French Acadians on St. Croix Island in 1604. You guys were there first and I need a, just a little paragraph to bring to a minister. So she believes that what I say is true. He said, I'll write the letter down. You want me to go there at your meeting with you? And he came, he came. It was, and every time I, I do this, it's because at once uh, the hospital in Moncton, George Dumont, is right across the road from Fisheries and Ocean. I was going through treatments, and uh, I was asked to go and give a, a conference presentation in front of all fisheries officers. And uh, they put them, uh, not off, but... Uh, the afternoon off to, to view the documentary. I had the gall to go and show that documentary that begins with them, with that conflict. And when I, I finished my presentation, I got a standing ovation. That was nice. But Yu Akaji went on stage. I didn't know he, he was there. He came down from St. Andrews to attend. And he walked on stage and he said, Don, you paint in three dimensions. You bring the person out of the painting. I came here to offer you the fourth dimension, which is my time. Call me anywhere on this planet, anytime. I'll be there for you. And it's true every time I called. One time I called, I turned around the next day, and he was st standing up on my lawn. He said, you called? I needed him for the first showing of my work at the Provincial Museum in, in St. John. And I wanted to make sure that he would speak on my behalf or, or his, and 
came here to tell me I'll be I'll be there for you and he was soft spoken and uh, he's the type of guy that uh, you're proud to say that's my friend you know? and most of those chiefs all of them have came to my house in Potmush and had supper with us all the chiefs Margaret was at my house three or four times you know and uh, Roger Augustine, when I was sick, he came over, and, and this gives me a, an example of reconciliation. When uh, one of the chiefs spoke to a minister, she said, reconciliation, that's what he said, reconciliation will never happen on top of a hill in Ottawa. Don McGraw right there and me, this is all about reconciliation. Maybe you should listen to what he's saying what's going on here because this is the true meaning of reconciliation so the rest will no longer be my story this is like it was a journey it was the hardest one but it's the best thing I ever did as an artist